Are you trying to tell me that this box uh, has a workstation PC, sort of gaming PC in it? Yes, I am. In fact, it came all the way from France and was sent to us by a company called Calios, who specializes in silent cooling. Yes, my friends, cooling with no fans, no pumps, no water. Get the hell out of here. Oh, man. Oh, there it is. And... Mm, Oh, and no real chance of extracting this thing on my own. I'm gonna go round up a posse. We'll be right back. Massdrop is now featuring the new flagship IEM from DZAT featuring a 6.8 millimeter dynamic driver. Check them out at the link in the video description. So the first thing I want to know is why couldn't I move this? Exactly how heavy is this bastard? So let's take it over to the scale here. If you can help guide me onto it. Yep. Okay. Wow. 72 and a half pounds for this bastard. 72 and a half pounds. What kind of, what kind of bull crap is that? Like what is going on in here? Well, let's have a look at exactly what's going on in here. So we've got a 5820K processor. We've got four DIMMs of, uh, what is that? Yep, HyperX Predator DDR4 memory. We've got an MSI X99S SLI Plus. We've got, uh, this is a 500 watt Superflower passive power supply. We've got an SSD. And finally, we've got a GTX 1080. But none of that, I mean, especially given this is in an aluminum case, it's not even heavy. None of that accounts for the weight. So the weight all seems to come from Kalios's cooling solution. So this is a gigantic, what looks and feels like aluminum heatsink all across the back of the case here. It's gotta be about two and a half, three inches thick with these gigantic fins and a secret sauce inside that they specifically contractually forbidden me to open and look closely at. But the basic principle is on their site. Instead of what you might normally use in a heat pipe, which is sometimes even water, they're actually using a refrigerant called HFC 245FA. So this is pentafluoropropane. Yes, I had to look at a cheat sheet in order to remember that. They're using that along with these, uh, these capillaries, and you can actually see them here, passing from the heat sink over to the CPU area, and then there'd be another one down by the GPU. So they're using these, these presumably copper tubes that are carrying fluid down the one side. So that'll go in the fluid side to the CPU block. Then what happens is it's evaporating here and the vapor is going out this way. Now they're able to move it without a pump thanks to a very similar principle to how heat pipes work and that is like these micro pores in the metal itself. How they keep it directional, how they have it flowing fast enough in order to achieve the temperatures they claim on their website though, that is still a mystery to me. So naturally I'm not just going to take their word for it, but the basic premise here is pretty straightforward. Calios is using the same technology that got them four and a half million euros of investment funding back in 2014 uh, uh, to take the technology that they developed for data center cooling that basically eliminates the problems with air. That is that it's hard to direct the heat somewhere that you want it to go and it's not as effective and the problems with water which is that maintenance is an absolute nightmare and bring it to the desktop so no moving parts no noise and they claim great performance that's cool i mean i don't know how cool it is it's really quiet though that's for sure so step one with my test bench drive installed is going to be to let it sit for like half an hour and idle because I want to know what kind of temperatures it runs at when we're not putting any kind of load on it like if you were just you know using a word document for example 
And that is not bad. So the CPU is sitting around 39 degrees, the GPU is sitting at around 30 degrees. But of course, idle is not the test of a cooling solution. So the next thing I'm going to do is throw up an IDA64 test where we put it under load. And would you look at that, 45 minutes later, CPU is still sitting at 67 degrees on the package. And perhaps even more impressively, I mean, these are like decent air cooler temps. Perhaps even more impressively is that the heatsink is handling that load with pretty much no difficulty whatsoever. So you can look at these thermal camera shots and see that even our hottest point is well within what I would consider to be the comfort zone. So that leads us then to our last test, crisis three. I want to sit and run this game. Right, let's just launch Origin. I want to run this game for one hour and see if it can still hold up when we dump all that GPU heat load into the system. Okay, so uh, we're back for the end of our one hour GPU test, although I should probably point out that it's actually been three days, though that's even more impressive because check this out. Not only is our game still running, it's just, yep, <laughs> not only is our game still running, but it's actually still running at 80 FPS, which means that whatever the thermals are of the rest of the system, it's at least not thermal throttling. So I'm gonna whip out the thermal camera and get all the readings that I need in order to put together kind of an after test for you guys. So the GPU, the CPU, memory, uh, I want that VRM solution, that like homemade VRM solution up there, as well as the power supply. And finally, I want to get readings from the back. Wow. Honestly, I think this might be the most impressive part. The hottest point on this entire fin array here. Oh man, I can barely move it. Ah! Okay. The hottest point on this entire fin array is down here at about 44 degrees Celsius. So to put that in perspective, the entire thing, like you can feel the heat coming off it like an aura, but the entire thing is not so warm that it's uncomfortable to touch, which is just mind blowing. Like, Okay, we'll deal with that later. In the meantime, back to the system. So I first heard about this back in July. There was a post on the forum, and it was like, oh, these guys claim to have a completely silent workstation. I kind of went, oh, yeah, right. This is always being claimed, but as soon as you put a fan or a pump in a system, it is not silent. And for that matter, even this one with no moving parts in the cooling system is not silent because you can hear a little bit of electrical noise and like electrical switching noise in the power supply, even though this is nothing close to what I would consider to be coil wine. But what it is, is phenomenally quiet, like to the point where you can only hear that stuff because it's so quiet. And even more impressively, this is where I really got shocked. GPU temps at 99% usage of 65 degrees. 65 degrees cpu package temperatures of 55 degrees it not only is a silent cooler but it actually outperforms most other cooling solutions that i have seen short of like high-end water cooling with like a triple or quadruple radiator of course, though, I don't entirely expect you guys to take my word for it, so I'm gonna fire up my digital sound level meter, and let's fire up our game. Okay, so this tells us not a whole hell of a lot, other than that when I talk, even from over here, we see peaks of about 80 decibels. We need to get somewhere quieter, away from our server room. What is this? A computer. I've never seen a heat sink this baller. This is like a car heat sink. It's actually nothing like a car heat sink. Car heat sinks have a very high fin per inch count. Missing over there. Why are these not aligned? Um, if there were any cats at the office, they would be all over this thing. It's probably true. It is just, not hard okay, to tell. Just gaff tape it. 
Just gaff tape I can't that on. Gaff tape it. That won't work. If you don't go get the gaff tape, okay, I will. Forget it. Let's just move it. I know that I'm having a great time. Where are we going? Okay, but you're in the wrong spot. Hey, it is quieter back here. Robert. Okay. So at about 35 decibels, this is the quietest spot in our warehouse. So I'm going to plug the system in and power it on. And that made no difference whatsoever. Okay. Well, that's cool, Linus. It actually works. Holy cow. How do I get one? Um, that's kind of a complicated answer. They say, and I believe them, because if you look closely at their website, this is clearly the exact same system that's in all of their promotional materials, that this is the only prototype in existence right now. I suspect this is just kind of like a weird side project for one of the people who works there. Um, but they do have plans. Oops. Beyond the availability of this configuration, if you buy a whole system, if you like contact them for pricing, they do have plans to release something in the future for they're saying about 500 bucks for the cooler and a custom enclosure that you'd be able to integrate your own system into. And they figure that'll be available oh, sometime around CES of this year. But in the meantime, this is a very cool proof of concept and a very heavy proof of concept. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Holy shit, A legitimately fanless computer. Well, there's lots of fanless computers, but this one has a GTX 1080 in it. So thanks for watching, guys. If you disliked this video, hit that dislike button. But if you liked it, hit the like button, get subscribed, maybe even consider checking out where to buy... Mm, okay, you won't be buying one of these on Amazon anytime soon, but uh, we have our link to Amazon in the video description. Also in the video description, we've got our merch store where you can buy cool shirts like this one. We've got our community forum, which you should totally join, and probably other things too. Go check it out. It's great. I highly recommend it. What else do I normally say? Right, when you're done doing all that stuff, you can check out our latest video over on Channel Superfun right about here. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and all that good stuff so you don't miss any more videos just like this one.